So in the beginning, I was planning on helping Roger. Roger's wife was my best friend in college and she died and I was just helping him. And then I realized that it could be a real opportunity for me as well. Roger was sick um, and nobody really knew it but me. I was trying to help him slow down so he wouldn't get sicker and he wouldn't. I mean, he was just determined that he was going to work as hard as he could for however long he was going to live. So then we started growing. I'd hire people, and he'd get more work, and I'd hire more people. And now I actually did a lot of the wiring. I did the wiring diagrams. I'd go in the field and wire for them. So it kind of grew from there. And our customers loved us, and they wanted us to do everything. And they kept asking us to do generator service opposed to just the switch gear and the high level engineering. But I saw it as an opportunity to grow the business in something that's not so technical. And also knowing that Roger was sick, what would we do if he got real sick or if he died? So I started you know, telling him that, you know, that I wanted to have another company, Prime Power Services, that did the service part of the work. I was determined that I was gonna do this. In 1999, we were awarded the um, Georgia Small Business of the Year Award. It kind of made us realize we had done something kind of special. And to be able to go to Washington and get that award, it was kind of amazing. In uh, March 6 of 2000, we closed down the manufacturing company. Um, and then Roger died on April 17th um, after that. So those two things were major um, disruptions. They thought I was going to quit. They thought, I, I mean, I had so many competitors come trying to buy the company after Roger died because they figured, oh, she's just a woman. She's not going to keep this thing going. Basically, I don't really care a lot about what people think about me. <laughs> Roger would have never let me quit, so I decided to keep the lights on. We made service our focus, and the service is getting up in the middle of the night and answering your phone going there with a customer at a hospital who might lose their job if something goes wrong. And you're there with them instead of competitors that wouldn't even answer the phones. I'm proud of what we all did. Because it was, it was Roger and he, he was a brilliant man. And we just, we just worked really hard. And everybody worked really hard to make uh, a company that um, does excellent work. You know, we give out a, an award um, at the awards banquet, it's the Roger Fisher Can Do Award because Roger never said no to anything. I mean, Roger would not tolerate anything but perfection. John and Richard and Les continued to make sure that anybody that we hired or anybody that they worked with had that same can-do mentality. Roger always believed in it. He demanded it of those first men that worked with him. So John and Richard and Les have really continued that culture. What's really exciting about this period in our life of the business is that a lot of the people that started the company and were, have been here from the beginning, now we have a second generation. So this next generation will continue the excellence and the culture of hard work that Roger Bisher instilled in all of us when we first started. I remember that one bedroom house where all of this got started. It seems like a long time ago now, but now expanding into six states and counting, that's the foundation that something like Prime Power in the 21st century can be built upon. It requires that type of root. It requires a, a humility. You don't know where you're going unless you can remember where you came from. We're investing in ways to create opportunities for people in the community who can work with their hands and who can be there when it matters with what matters. That's the kind of thing that's exciting. I think that it's gonna be not only how we achieve greatness in the future, but also how we build a new community around um, the civilization that requires electricity.